Hello! Welcome to our Halloween episode of Our Time to Quilt! Woo! <laughs> okay, I had to do it. I'm sorry. It's the kid in me. I just had to. How can you ignore? How in the world can you ignore Halloween? You know? Doesn't matter that I'm 65. I still love it. So let me grab, turn things back on, open up the window. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I hope you had a good time. And uh, yeah, Mark helped me get things set up over here. And... Um, and get my little lights all up in the ribbon. And and um, I thought about putting makeup on, but I didn't want to scare children. So, yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It is so good to see you. And it is a beautiful fall day. Let me see if I can do something out the window. Let me turn off this light. Out the window, it is so gorgeous, and the fall colors are just beautiful. So, I was sitting here, and I wish you could see them as pretty as they really are, but I was sitting here looking out the window going, oh, I love this time of year, and this show is dedicated to my Becky. We had the best time. We went to um, Asheville, North Carolina, and it's a little over, about two, two and a half hours away, and for, to celebrate her birthday. She said, would you like to celebrate my birthday with me? And I said, sure. So we went to Asheville and had so much time. Becky, we saw this one shop, and I will show you the picture. And she said, I found your mothership. <laughs> So she got a picture of me standing outside my mothership. And I couldn't have agreed with her more. It was a wonderful shop. All right. So I hope you're not scared by Halloween. Some people, thank you, Barbara. Um, some people are afraid of Halloween or associate it with evil spirits. But Halloween for me is a chance for us to play at being scary because there are plenty of things in life that will scare you whether it's covid or finding out you've got kidney cancer there's lots of scary things out there and when we can kind of take that on and um turn it to our advantage and use it and have fun and i might try to watch a scary movie tonight i am so literal that usually I can't handle scary movies. So, oh, the sun was shining on me. I was like, what is this? <laughs> but anyway, um, we're very excited to be here. And uh, as usual, I'm running at loose ends. Lately, I have so much to do, and I seem to get less and less done. Oh, and I wanted to, yeah, I, I love, did you notice the little strobe lights? And uh, it's my husband's headlamp. Oh, that's, oh, I should have done this. That will scare you. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. If you have epilepsy, don't look at strobe lights. But it's his headlamp. And I thought that would be so much fun. So I might sneak it in a little later. But if you have, tell me if you have epilepsy and I will make sure not to show it. So I, and let me see who all is here. I want to send out a notice. And errata or something is what it's called when you make a big boo boo. But last night I was up working till about 1 30. And I thought, I'm going to surprise the ladies and put up block number 10 early and but guess what um i put the wrong block up so i had to go to the website today about 12 45 and go 
whoa, whoa, and take off the wrong one and put the right one. So I apologize if you started making block 10 with the old one. So I'm really sorry. And um, I was thinking you could use it for a nice holiday pillow. So I try not to ever have that happen. But you know what? Sometimes it just does. All right. I see something's going on with Barbara. So I better see who is here and find out. Oh, thank you. Isn't fall just wonderful? I think it's because we've survived a hot, humid summer. And I'm ready. I get invigorated. In fact, I've got beef stew in the crock pot. I, I've been cooking like a fool. I tell you, I because it's like now I don't want convenience foods. I want the real thing. So that's what I, I fall is like I come back alive, you know. I don't like hot weather. All right. Whoops. Sorry about that. I accidentally clicked on whoops. Nope. I almost clicked to leave this site. I better wake up. <laughs> I actually didn't fall asleep till almost 4.30, so I am a little tired, but I watched the best movie. It was on Netflix, and it was with Melissa McCarthy and that cute fellow from Bridesmaids, and it was a really sweet, t tender movie. I enjoyed it. All right. Another death last week, your brother-in-law. Was it from COVID, sweetheart, or just another passing? Uh isn't that hard when they come in multiples? Well, let's see all who's here. Barbara Smith, first person on. Carol, hi, sweetheart. And, uh, oh, that's wonderful. And let me see. Alberta, hi, darling, hi. And I wanted to tell you, too, you know, last Friday I got my booster. I had my first vaccinations as early as I could get them last March and April. And soon as six months happened and we could get the booster, Mark and I went in and got the booster. He felt a little puny, not bad, but just where he wanted to take naps the day after. And he felt a little warm, but not really enough of a fever to take his temperature. And, um, and then he sprang back, no problem. My only reaction, I hardly even had any soreness in my arm. I had a little soreness in a lymph node in my neck the third or fourth day. That was it. Big whoop. So I'm so tickled because I get to spend time with my family for the holidays with no mask. Yay. So my daughter's had her booster and it's wonderful. So if you at all were worried, oh, well, I feel sick or anything. It was the whole time, honestly, through every vaccination, it has been easy. And uh, even if you do feel a little puny, it'll last for a day or so for the vast majority of people. So anyway, but it's a good thing. All right, let's see who else. So we've got, we just said hi to Alberta and Carol. And I love seeing y'all chat. Mary's here. Mary, I hope you didn't take the wrong pattern, sweetie, and run with it. But the one that's on the site now is the correct one. And it looks like this. The pattern looks like this. So I had to write a Cynthia back and say, Cynthia, I sent you the wrong one. Here's the right one. So the block that was supposed to be was just going to be too simple and plain. So I found this one instead. And what I have to do is a lot of these blocks are the wrong size. So I have to put them in EQ8 and I have to enlarge them and then print them back out. And that's where I, I got the mistake. So the one I had planned for block 10, when I actually worked with it on EQ8, aren't mm, not, not interesting enough. So, all right. I, it only had two colors and the background. And I, you know, I'm loving these blocks. I didn't want only two colors in the background. All right. Who else is here? Marsha's here. Oh, I hope you like the beginning. If you came in later, you'll have to go back and watch the beginning. And, oh, shoot, there is something else I was supposed to do. Hold on just a second. Oh, I forgot this. Let me see. Okay, hold on, guys. Hold on. Um, okay. 
Now pretend you just got here, okay? I'm gonna see if this works. But pretend you just got here. All right, let me turn off this light. And let me get this again. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to close the window, but let me see. Okay, ready? <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> I forgot I had I had this wonderful music. Woo. Okay, let me stop that. If I can stop it, it'll be nice. Okay, good. So I'll save it for the saying goodbye. We'll go out with the flourish there. All righty. Great. So could you hear the music? I was hoping it would work, but I wasn't sure. I would love to know if you could hear the music. Yay! <laughs> oh, I told Mark, normally we never get trick-or-treaters. We're kind of in an older neighborhood, but we've had some children, some younger families move in. And I told Mark that tonight I'm going to leave the porch light on. I'm going to light up the pumpkin and I'll get our little, we have this little skeleton that goes across on a rope. And I'm going to, and, and so he actually got a little bit of candy today. And he said, we won't get anyone. I said, but it's okay. We'll try. We'll try. So, uh, <laughs> it was fun. All right. So, let me see. I haven't even sit, finished. I, I'm having such fun playing. I haven't even said hi to everyone. Laura Ryland is here. Yay. Oh, I love your ghost, Carol. Oh, this is great. Betty Middleton. Mwah. So good to see you. This is fun. Oh, and my Jody is here. And up oh, there's Debbie. I love seeing Debbie. And uh, oh, it is so, so good. Charlene Lawson's here. Wait till you see some great photos I have from Charlene Lawson. Cheryl Lemon is here. She is my Virginia sunshine. I love Miss Cheryl Lemon. Ah. Uh, Debbie had her booster shot, too. It was a piece of cake, honestly. So, I mean, it's not that I want to go get a shot every day. Nobody likes shots, but these are pretty easy. You know, considering you'll get to live, that's a nice thing. <laughs> All right. Oh, Alberta Conti. Alberta Powell, meet Alberta Conti. We have two Albertas on at the same time, and they both belong to our group's I.O. And so make sure if I've said your name, if I have introduced you or, or, con, or commented on you twice, you can send me a email to our time to quilt at twc.com. And I will invite you to our group's I.O. Our group's I.O. is free, and we have fun. Michelle is here. Michelle, I saw you the last one, and I was I didn't see you until bloop, I had already said goodbye. So I am sorry. But, um, but we have a free group's I.O., and I want to make sure that you know this. Sometimes... Our life changes, things change. You might not be able to get here live, but I still want you on the group. The group is nice for people who their schedule doesn't quite mesh with our live shows. And that's okay. Belong to the group and enjoy it. There's something about a sense of community, especially in the last year. I told Mark, I absolutely love what I do. I'm not setting the world on fire. But you know what? Reaching out, having the connection with you this last year has meant everything. So I love y'all being here. Oh, gosh, yes. That's why. Oh, that's why I love. I'm, I just read Mary said she doesn't like gory movies, but the old matinee idols, which is why we love Jody's collection that she has done. They're amazing. 
But um, when when my kids were little, I used to do a haunted house every year. And I even had a ghost that would come down from the second floor porch down to the ground over their heads. And my ex would dress as Dracula and get in a, a coffin, little coffin we made. We had such fun. But the whole thing was we do we don't scare children. It was only to be fun, not scary. And uh, I, I before have had the tables where you have the peeled grapes in a baggie, like they're in a box. So they reach their hands in to see what it is and hot dogs for fingers and all that stuff. So I'm like a kid and I love that stuff. And Boris Karloff, Bella Lugosi, um, who is the other one? He wanted to be a classical actor, but he was so good in this in the horror genre. So I've forgotten his name. He was also a chef and an artist. And oh my gosh. There's another Marsha with your crochet friends. Oh, that's nice. Well, you know, we finally got a Debbie. I was one of seven Debbies in my um, high school PE class. We had to go by numbers. So I thought we'd have more Debbies. And I think by far we have more Cheryls. And we have two Charlene's and now two Albertas. And so it's it's really neat to see. All right. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you for everyone who's at least attempting our Christmas block of the week. And like I said, this is on our site. But don't worry if you don't belong to our groups I.O. That email that I just put up, and I'll make sure, I've got to remember to make sure to put it in the information below. And I'll send it to any of you. And if you don't have the other, this is the 10th. If you don't have the other nine, I'll send those to you too. And I first got the idea for most of these, almost all of them, from Wombat Quilts, a woman named Kathy in Australia. So I want to thank her. She has been, uh, she's so generous. She puts these up for free on her blog site. So, um, but let me show you the block. It's over here in the caution tape. But, uh, and... I hope Nadine doesn't mind that I've pinned them to her quilt, but I don't want to hide her beautiful quilt. So I hope she won't mind. I'm very gentle with her quilt, but I pin all of our blocks there. So this is this week's block of the week. And it's really pretty simple. Pretty simple. And to Mary, who frets over not having it just right, I thought I'd show you this. Now, I know better. I've been quilting for over 30 years. I know better. But I get in a hurry. And I want to hurry up and see it done. You know, what are you going to do? And you know what? Like I say, and I'm going to say this, Vincent Price. Thank you, Marsha. You know what? Y'all are so good. Because when I get on here and, you know, get a little airy, uh, y'all always know the answer. Thank you. But um, I get in a hurry. And I'm going to say this. If you want perfect, if you want perfection, get a computer to do it. If you want love and joy and happiness, I'm your gal. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to say this too. A quilt made with love is better than any cold, mechanical, perfect quilt any day. So make it with love. Have fun. Lisa's here. Lisa's here. So, yeah, Vincent Price. Oh, he was so cute. And who doesn't like Young Dr. Frankenstein? Is that the name of it? But anyway, so here is this week's block. If you'll notice, this is week number 10. We only have two more blocks left. I'm so excited. I had hoped, I think I had been promising y'all that I would start having the sashing done, put the blocks together to let you see. But I ran out of time. I'm sorry, Gene Wilder. Oh, wasn't he the cutest in it? Oh, my gosh. So it's just fun to have fun. And this is all just done in the spirit of play and remembering when I was little and 
Oh, gosh, Mary, doesn't that, that spooked you out. And I, when I see people, it's like, do I say something to them? You know, I've told y'all before, I worked at the museum um, at Historic St. Mary City. It's the birthplace of Maryland. And one day up drives Ted Koppel. Now, you date yourself if you know who Ted Koppel is. But he asked me for directions. And I stood there and giggled. And I said, I'm sorry, I've never met someone famous before. <laughs> and luckily, he was very nice and said, that, that that's okay. <laughs> but since then, I've seen, I saw, I was one time, I was at the Lincoln Memorial and saw, I just had his name. Oh, I'll think of it and I'll get, isn't that weird how you, it, you're ready to say it and you feel this breeze through your ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Ernest Borgnine. I saw Ernest Borgnine at the Lincoln Memorial. So, you know, I just, after a while, you just get used to, you know, hobnobbing with the, no, no. <laughs> no, I don't hobnob with anybody except my puppies. So, anyway. All right. Now, so I showed you our block of the week. And you know that I've got all the pieces cut out for the sashing and that all of the cornerstones are sawtooth stars. So and very, very, very easy. You, you just put the little squares on the ends of the sashing, and that's one side of the rays of the star. So anyway, um, let me show you some fun stuff. And I always, oh, I've got something to tell you. I've got big news to tell you. All right. I got some fabric from Pineapple Fabrics. This I'm going to use for fabric bead necklaces, mostly. And maybe some ruching and things like that. The, you know how the... Pineapple fabrics, I could spend money every day if I wasn't really careful because they have those fantastic pop-up sales. So if you are not signed up to Pineapple Fabrics newsletter, and if you don't mind being tempted, <laughs> check out Pineapple Fabrics free newsletter and watch the sales. Then this I thought was really interesting. It says create, paint, crochet, weave, sculpt, all of these craft and art words. And I'm going to use this for the journals that I'm going to make to sell. Then they had this black with little, isn't that beautiful? This just reminds me of Civil War era fabric. Had to get that. I got two yards of that. And then, because I love color so much, I got a piece of this. And this is Timeless Treasures. It, 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 I can't, I love stripes. I love rainbows. And so I had to get that. So, thought I would show you. I'm trying very hard not to buy too much fabric, but you know, we have to do our part for the economy. <laughs> so then the other thing I bought were some more rings because you know what? I'm loving making these Dorset um, buttons. And this is one I made this week. Oh, I've got another one, but it's in the car. I took it on my trip to Asheville with Becky and worked on it, and it's really neat. This is the first, for this first time, I took three different colors out of the floss, wound them together, just, you know, twisted them together and made it and used a really cool bead. That, I forgot what the, the name is for the technique, the glass beads but they're like the Tiffany glass where they had that iridescence. Really pretty. So I've had those beads forever. So I matched the three colors that tended to shine off the little, the little seed beads. And that's what I did. But these, I'm going to work on making some necklaces. And making each one a color 
a, sim a quiet color of the rainbow and turning them into necklaces. So I'm getting ready to go to a retreat in a couple weeks. And then I have my Myrtle Beach quilt party in January. And I like taking things to sell because you know me. I love having stuff to keep my hands busy at night. And I thought, why not make it to sell? So, of course, I'm kind of starting at the last minute. Now, here is a poinsettia that I made for my daughter. And I asked her if she wanted gold beads in the center. And she says, well, maybe just a few. But what I did is I tried to make it realistic. And I looked at a picture and try. Your brother met a bunch of, oh, yeah, in New York. I bet you he did. So here is that. I'm making this for my daughter, Katie. And it's poinsettia. And then I showed you this already. And this I did a kind of, I reversed the stitching. Normally this is on front, but I wanted the pearls to show up. So I did a flatter thing on the front. But it's good for a dab who has a hard time sitting still. Very good for her to have something to keep her hands busy. When I used to go to the movies, I would take crochet. And I could crochet in the dark by feel. And so I would sit and crochet during the movies. Because <laughs> I'm one of, are, do you know, are any of you those people that your knee kind of bounces up and down if you sit for too long? Yep, 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 yep. My mother used to reach over in church and pinch me because I would, always had my leg going. And, okay, here is a necklace that I made. Remember those, that safety paper, remember the safety paper beads that I thought were so pretty? They were just this really dark, look, they kind of look like a tweed a little bit. So I paired them with black pony beads and little silver beads. And I think it's right pretty. And not only that, because I'm going to try to sell them, I made a bracelet to go with it. Would you know, would you off the bat think that's paper? Isn't that funny? And not just paper, but junk mail paper. I started stringing up. I need to make some more. But these are the fabric beads that I made. So I started stringing these up. And when I make a few more, I'll have a necklace with that. Then I used some Christmas fabric and did these fabric beads. And I love that the fabric has the metallic gold. And so I put the gold pony beads in the middle of that. Well, actually, they're gold metallic beads. So, so then I've got a bunch of these ready to go when I have time and figure out what I'm going to make. Then I took the time to make a bunch of fabric beads and I'll show you. These are not sealed yet. Whoops. Go down. Mark put a new, oh, see that little jerking? He put a new, he knew some new joints on there for me. This is the star fabric. I mean, the heart fabric that I bought from Pineapple Fabrics, I tried making a barrel bead. And, you know, before I was showing you how I took and ironed it onto freezer paper, this time I actually used a very inexpensive fusible and fused them to paper. So I'm trying different methods. So here is the Metallic Christmas. Here is... Here is some batik fabric. And once I get these, once I get these with the finish on them, I think you'll be impressed. Let me see. What else do I have? I think it was just those fabrics. Oh, there was one more. Yes, I made some beads out of that fabric. So I don't know. If these will even sell, I might end up giving them away as just little thank you gifts or things. But it is awfully fun to make them and to see what can come from little strip scraps of fabric. And I love them. All right, so I'll get those finished. But you can make a successful 
barrel bead. Okay, so I thought I would show you that because before I've only made two beads. But anyway, so I've got a baggie of those, and when I get them finished and I've got enough of each kind, then I'll turn those into a necklace. So that's something I've been working on. Whoops, I forgot to put one back in. And just so you will know, when I made Katie's, my daughter's poinsettia, this poinsettia, and I'm going to put a pin back, and I might put a poinsettia leaf or two that kind of comes out from behind, then put a pin on it. But what I do is I take a strip and a fabric. Maybe this one was like an inch and a half to inch and three quarters, and then I just fold in the edges, and then I do the stitching. And there are wonderful, wonderful YouTube videos out there to teach you how to do um, ruching. I don't know what we would do without YouTube, honestly. So then when Becky and I went to, this is having a, I'm not used to this. Let me, luckily he put thumb screws on these joints so I don't have to use the dreaded hmm. <laughs> it might have been good it might have been good for me to practice with this he wanted me to practice today and I was like oh, I've got too much to do just too much to do so you know how that is oh well it's a little it's a little low <laughs> Oh, hello. So, okay, Deb. Well, this is a lot of fun. I should have practiced. So when we went, we stopped at a bead shop in Asheville. And I was being so good. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. But I was being so good. I wasn't going to spend any money except to treat my daughter out to lunch for her 43rd birthday. I'm old. Yep. <laughs> but I found these beads. And I think they're African style. They're nice and heavy, beautiful beads. And this strand, which is quite long, was $15. I said, I can afford that. So, but wouldn't, oh, they would be pretty with hair, but they'd be pretty with a black top or a white top. So, I will work on stringing these. I don't know what they are, but they're nice and sturdy. And you can feel, they must be something that was put in the kiln because you can feel the thick glazing that did the designs. You know, I've never done that, Lisa. Have you tried that? I have, I, I've heard about it, but I've never done it. And I'm sure you have to do that outside in fresh air. So be careful. <laughs> So, if anybody comes in and I don't see their name, somebody get my attention. All right. Before I tell you my big news, I've got one more thing to show you. For you, those of you who were here Thursday night, you might have noticed I was a little perplexed when I went to put the finish on how my fabric darkened on my moon. Whoops. Okay, this is... Uh, boy, this is giving me a little trouble. Well, I want it to point down, so I'll try to fix it in a moment. All right. So here, I have tried to lighten this up the best I could. Even these got a little too dark, darker than I wanted. So then I had to undo stitches. But look at the back of this. Do you see what I'm seeing? This fabric, which is a Jenny Beyer fabric, remember her fabrics are very saturated, meaning they have a ton of dye put in to create that rich color. Well, look what it did. It was bleeding up from behind. Do you see all of this? So I thought that might be happening. It's what was happening. So what I'm going to do is take this off. And then I'm going to get a new piece of the moon fabric. I'm going to cut out a new moon. And then I'm going to cut out all of these things new. And I'm going to put a new moon there. Because look at that. 
And I think what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to back the moon fabric with white or something. I've got to do something to keep this background from bleeding. I mean, I wish you could see this. It is positively gray. And so I was hoping once it dried, it wouldn't be so dark. But this is just, it doesn't have the sparkle I want. It doesn't have that brightness. So I will be working on this, and then I will show you. Um, you know what I might do? I just thought of it. I To help give me a little space between the dark black fabric and this moon, I'm going to cut some batting. And put it right in there. I think maybe I'll even um, seal this back fabric. But it just made my moon get so dark. And I was so disappointed. So anyway. Because you can see. Look at the difference. Between the fabric before and the fabric after. I Sadly I don't think I'm going to be able to get as many yellows. I chose when I cut it out before. I chose a very light area. So I'm going to have to, I'll have to work with it and see what I can get. But, and I may have to make my own strips out of different fabrics to add in there to lighten it up. All right. So I'm back to the drawing board on that. But you know what? It's worth saving it. I love this little quilt. I love my little spider. I love my little vulture, my bats. And so I am, I'm probably going to, I'm probably not going to be able to take off my owl. So I'll make a new one, which honestly, he was a little too big anyway. So I'll make him just a touch smaller, but I will redo just this moon part. And, but look at how much. Look how much um, bled through. So that is that can be a problem. But if I intersperse it with some batting, it should help protect it. So I just want, I always like to show you when something doesn't work out. Because if I have this problem, then you are probably going to have this problem. And I, you know, what do you do when something doesn't work out? So I'm going to get this finished. And then next year, I'll have it ready for the wall. And don't forget, I'm going to take and, and put extra behind the moon and behind the pumpkins. I'm going to cut that shape out, glue a piece of batting to the back. Then when I do my whole piece of batting, I'm going to have a lot of 3D relief off the edge. I love having things really come at you. So, okay. But i like you to know... Because you know what? Anytime you're dealing with art, it's a process. And it is, oh, let me see. Oh, it is a process of try and fail, try and success. And I don't want you to ever think that things come just instantly easy for me. Because they don't. I have to work very hard. And sometimes I do something several times. This this one is... Huh. I don't know. But that's... I'm using a brand new arm setup. Ah, well, I'm a little... Do you mind if I'm a little slanted? <laughs> All right. So... Here is the news, the big news for me that I'm so excited about. Whoops. Let me get the sun out of my face. It's funny. When the seasons change, so does the angle of the sun. And where, you know, it'll just all of a sudden come in and right in your eyes. I haven't been telling y'all, but remember my sewing machine that I took to the shop? in the town next to us, Greensboro, to have it repaired. Well, they repaired it, worked really nice, but then the scissor function wouldn't work. Well, I have to have, uh, I have to have, no, Ann and Jan, I don't think, uh, I know for sure Jan's not going to be there. I don't think Ann's going to be there either. 
but I think we have 30 some people and you have to have your vaccination proof. And uh, I'm, I haven't been out of the house like that. This going with my daughter to Asheville, that's the first time I've been out in, in, in a sit down restaurant and uh, going in a shop. It's the first time in ages. So I was kind of, you know, a little discombobbled. And uh, I told Mark, I'm going to take my earphones and a book on, an uh, audio book, and I might need to kind of just shut down from the world because I've kind, I'm kind of a hermit, and I have enjoyed being by myself over this time. So we'll see how that goes. I might be calling you, Michelle, going, too many people. <laughs> but luckily, I'm not running it this year, so I just get to go be me. I'll do the bingo game, but that's it. Um, but anyway, um, so I took my favorite machine, my Juki, to the shop, and then I had to take it back because the scissor cutter wouldn't work. Well, they can't get in the parts needed to fix it. It's some of those parts that have been sitting out on some container ship off the coast. It's been five months and I don't have my machine. So I they told me they were really kind and they were like, I'm so sorry. I wish we could get the parts. And Mark said, well, should you get it back without it being fixed? There's Polly. And should you get it back without the scissors being fixed? And I, I said, no, because what happens is I can't I have trained myself, both my main machines, I have an automatic scissor cutter, which I love. And if I hit, if I accidentally forget and hit the scissor button, it tangles the thread all up inside. And then you have to take off the presser plate and then you have to clean it all out. Oh. So last time when I did try to use it a little bit before I took it back in for them to fix it, I had to take or put a piece of cardboard over the button to try to remind me don't push that button so anyway I made a decision and I and y'all are gonna think I'm weird because I've been talking about the budget because oh good lord we have had so many bills you know we just put a whole new air conditioning system in the whole house and I can tell you a whole lot more and having a kidney removed is very expensive so it has just been a very expensive two years. But I kept telling Mark, mostly teasing, or maybe not mostly teasing, that I've been looking at saw machines. Because they said they would loan me one for the retreat. Because I don't like taking this big machine. This is a big Elna 7200 Pro Quilter's Dream. I don't like taking this big thing. It's like 33 pounds. And so I told him, you know, I'm looking at sewing machines, and I always told myself, if I got another sewing machine, and I'm real cheap, I've never spent more than $1,000 for a sewing machine. Well, my long arm, but that came with a frame, and it was only $1,800. So I'm very cheap, very cheap. I buy used all the time. Well, now I do. <laughs> but anyway, I told him if I ever got another machine, I wanted to get one that had the automatic pivot feature, which is the moment you stop sewing, the presser foot lifts up. And since I do something predominantly art quilting, I don't sew out my clothing anymore, and I don't make that many traditional quilts, but I do mostly art quilting. I do a lot of thread painting, and not having to reach and lift up a presser foot would be wonderful for me. So... When I was at the shop, spit it out. <laughs> I bought a machine. Okay. <laughs> You're so cute, Debbie. But I'm trying to let you know it was really hard for me to do. But when I was at the shop, the repair shop, I said, how much would it cost me to get a machine that has the automatic scissors and the automatic presser foot lift? He said over 2000 And so what I did is since I've been crazy wanting my machine back, I started looking and looking, and I found a Juki, DX7, HZL DX7, 
and that has the automatic pivot feature. It also, the foot will float. So if I'm doing like working with satin, sometimes, you know, I, I work with really unusual fabrics like LeMay's, it'll float so that I get a nice finish. It won't bunch it up. So, oh, Alberta, you're so sweet. So what I did is I started looking and I said, I want to use machine. It's like getting a new car. I'm sorry. As soon as you drive it off the lot, it loses a ton of value. So I started looking. And I looked at every online thing I could find. The cheapest price they, they, they usually sell. You can find them anywhere for $13.99. That's too rich for me. And my last Juki that I bought, it was a $1,200 machine. I got it for $750. And it had really not, it, the woman said she bought it, but she didn't really use it because she was loving her antique machines. I got it for $750. That's the kind of thing I was looking for. So I found this guy, um, a sewing store out in Las Vegas, and he had that machine lightly used and he had seven so it probably had been from a class or a cruise where you know how they'll use to get these machines from the manufacturer or whatever let them be used and sell them as used so it said lightly used and i asked him does it have everything and what's the shape and he said very lightly used it all works so it was 7.99 i said wow that's quite a bit down from 13.99 I found other places that had them for $11.99 or $11.79, but that was still too expensive for me. So I just put it in my watch list. I was just going to watch it. The next day, I get a message saying, the seller is, is willing to offer you $80 off that price. So I told Mark, um... There was a machine I was looking at, and the normal machines are $13.99, and this one was $7.99, and he just wrote and said he's going to give me $80 more off, and it's free shipping. You talk real fast when you're scared. They're going to say, what the heck? He said, hmm, well, would you be willing to sell your Elna downstairs if you got this one? Because you really wouldn't have a place for it. And I said, yeah, I would be willing to. He said, well, I think if you'd be willing to sell that, just kind of recoup some of the money that you're spending for the new one. He said, I think that's a good idea. You love your Jukies. It does what the kind of sewing you want to do. And you do need a new machine. I mean, you know, to drive an hour out of your way to pick up a, 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 a a lender machine before you have to go to your retreat just doesn't make sense. And we realize as much as I use the machines, I need to be able to always have one. And honestly, the older I get, you know, I like the weight of those jukies. They're smaller and I am going to miss having that. This one's so big at the bed on it's huge. And so I'm going to miss that, but I can take them to classes, retreats, camping with me, wherever I want to go. I think that's a good thing. So I picked that puppy up for $719, and I'm thrilled. And um, But you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I am going to sell this one. And I thought I would just tell you, just in case if anybody's looking for a new machine, this is the Elna. 7200 Quilter's Dream Pro. I bought it back in 2007, and it's the big one. You can see how big it is. And then um, it has the, uh, the knee lift, you know, where the pedal where it brings up the presser foot. It has a knee lift. It has 200 and some stitches. It has auto thread cutter, the, the needle threader. In fact, you know what? It's the machine you always see me sew on. So it's right here. It has the big table, an extra table that goes on it. So I'm, I'm thinking I looked around. There's all kinds of prices. It was $1,200, but it was 
but I got it on special because I bought a frame with it. So I got it for, because I used to use this on a frame as a short arm, long arm. And so I think I got it for just 1080 something like that. And I'm thinking of letting it go somewhere between five and six. And I just had it serviced a year ago. And um, so just thought I would tell you and get, let you, you know, and then I'll probably list it on So It's For Sale. I might even take it to the retreat. Just let somebody see it, test it if they want to use it. So anyway. But that's what I thought I would tell you. Sometimes they have antique ones. Yeah, I um I like my modern machines. Uh, gosh, Becky and I saw a treadle sewing machine with a coffin top. You know those that have the beautifully carved coffin tops, oval coffin top, three hundred and seventy five dollars, and it was covered in all kinds of gorgeous decals. Yeah, the decals, but some of them were a little rubbed. You know, like you would expect. I was so tempted, but I said, Deb, that just becomes something to gather dust because I wouldn't use it. I love my modern machines. I want my automatic thread cutter. I push a button, boop, thread's caught, uh, cut. Oh, another thing. The other night when I was working on my Halloween quilt, remember that when you use fusible, your needle will get sticky. And then it will hold on to the thread. So I had to today, when I went to work on it, I said, oh, that's right. The, the thread caught the other day. What was that about? Well, the needle was sticky as all get out. So I put a titanium, um, a bigger titanium needle in it. And I just know change when you're, if you have problems when you're doing thread painting on something you fused, check that needle. Maybe it would be good to keep some alcohol handy to wipe it off frequently while you're using it. So anyway, but if any of you want a really nice, you know, this is, this is the Elna 7200 and I'm willing, especially for my ladies, I'll give you a good deal on it. And you know, it's got a few little scratches and stuff. And the only thing that I can even say is sometimes with the little presser foot lever, like, let me show you. The only thing I can even say that would be wrong with it at all is the presser foot lever. See how it's up, but it sometimes wants to fall back down. So, but Mark said he's going to look at that. He said he can probably fix that. But, you know, it's got it's got some wear and tear. I'm the original owner, and I've had it the entire time. And it's a sweet machine with a drop-in bobbin. If you're all interested, I'll send you all the specs. I have everything to go with it. So, but I have enjoyed using it. It's been serviced several times since I've had it. And it's, it's a good gal, but I can't, it, to me... With my bad back and arthritis, I can't carry this to a retreat. So it's a little much for me. Melissa's here. Hi, sweetie. Oh, oh, let me tell you, Janome's are really, really wonderful. And uh, so, but I just need something that's really good with thread painting and all of that. This Elna is big enough. It has, well... Is it 23 inches long? It's big enough that it could handle doing quilting um, if you wanted to do sit-down quilting. And I had it on a New Joy frame for a couple of years. So, anyway. But Melissa, it's so good to see you. So, that's my news. I'm hoping to get the new one in before the retreat. It would make life easier, although I'm going to have to put it through all of its paces to make sure it works. But if this tells you something, look around, look around, look around. Because, um, and a machine like this Elna, the big bodied machines um, with a lot of throat space, it costs a lot more. 
if I the, the the model I got is considered their portable machine. If I were to have gotten the big body, it was like twenty seven twenty two hundred to twenty seven hundred dollars. So that's when the price really shoots up. All right. So what about the oh you didn't hear about the Juki? Um, it's supposed to be fixed and coming in at some point, but they cannot get any of the sewing the scissor cutting parts because they're out of, you know, I, they're sitting on a container ship somewhere and, and they're so nice and they keep apologizing and they'll loan me a machine. If I want, he said, ma'am, I would love to fix it. It's sitting right here on my workbench. I, I'll never forget. And he said, it says now one of the three parts that could be what's wrong is they think coming in, but the other two start, still aren't available so it's just going to be wait and see and you know what can you do that's just what's happening out there now this whole pandemic threw everything off so that's why i thought i've got to have two good machines to go where i need to go i'm a quilter it's always either taking it camping or when i go see my kids i take it with me i need to have something that travels so I, you know, if I didn't do this for a living, so to speak, I maybe wouldn't need to, but you got to have a backup so that if one needs to be serviced, you can still go. I've had, I've only had my Elna here. My daughter, I asked her if I could borrow back my old Janome. And uh, in fact, it's so old, it was called New Home. And, um, but anyway, I uh, asked for that back, but boy, I like my thread cutter. I am very spoiled, I got to admit. So, you take your featherweight. All this, and people who love featherweights, love them. But they didn't cut your thread for you back then. And they didn't have an automatic threader. And I do like that. <laughs> I'm spoiled rotten when it comes to that. Your Elna is an embroidery machine. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah, this is, this Elna is not one that you want to take to, um, it's not one, it's too big to take on to retreat, so anyway, but if anybody, if you know of anybody that wants a good solid machine with a few bells and whistles, I mean, it has, let me see, oh God, it has somewhere down here, I've got, I've got a, gather up all the parts to it. I was going to show you. Here it is. Luckily, I keep everything right here. But here's the little thing that goes on to show you all the different alphabets and all the different things. And here is your tool case with all the different feet. And things. So I have everything, the table, and uh, it has quite uh, the tables back there, but it has a very large table too. So it's it's really nice if feed dogs can drop down and all that. So oh, I love my thread cutter. And see, the, this Elna has spoiled me rotten because I've been using this for that. I, oh, it. It means everything to me. It makes it so easy just to push that button and you get going, you know. So it also has one on the outside, but the, having that built in and now being able to have that pivot feature where the presser foot raises up. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> what I love about the thread cutter, it saves a lot of thread, but it, it cuts the bobbin and the top at the same point. So it's really nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it is nice. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've, I've, I love the thought of sitting one day, looking out the window, using a treadle machine, and heck, I could get exercise, which I need. But then I'm thinking, are you kidding? There's so many bells and whistles. Like this one has, this Elna has the two separate motors, one, a separate motor for the bobbin winding and that's i mean i get spoiled by that i don't have to unthread anything to wind bobbins and 
I get spoiled. <laughs> All righty. Let me see if there's any. Oh, don't forget the pin cushion contest. The deadline is coming up tomorrow <laughs> and um i have to have every, drop down dead november friday what would that be the fifth and then next sunday you're going to choose the winner oh thank you sweetheart yeah i don't get new machines often so oh i gotta tell you this okay so when i came up after doing my thursday show mark said i looked into that machine and i think you should get it and that's definitely a good deal. As long as it works, like he says, you know, in the shape it's in, that's a good deal. So um, he said, I think you should get it. So he went on to bed. I stayed up to 1.30, hemming and hawing, getting nauseous, my stomach getting to, to a knot, thinking, no, just walk away. This is just... You know, when I take this one out of the desk, Mark cut the Mark cut the hole in the desk for it. Well, my new one is not going to be nearly as big. So we're going to have to patch this desk. Well, then it'll look like it'll look terrible. So then we're going to have to go get another sheet of laminate, which I'd like white next time. And he's going to have to laminate the top of the desk. So he's going to have to patch the hole. And then laminate the desk. And it's like, poo. <laughs> That's a lot of work. So, anyway. Unfortunately, it's not going to be easy. And I was thinking, I don't know if I want to do all this. I should just stick with what I've got. You know, what if, you know. Well, anyway, finally I went, Deb, do you really believe this is a good idea? Then just get it. And uh, so, and so the next morning when he woke up, he said, well, do we have a new sewing mach machine in our family? And I went, yes. <laughs> he said, yay. And I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> he knows that I have a hard time spending money. It's like, <gasps> so. Oh, yes. I think I did get yours, Melissa. I've gotten several in the last week, and I'm so excited. And hold on, Melissa. I want to double check. And you know what I'm going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm worried I might have missed someone's early on. So I'm going to drop everybody who submitted a pincushion picture or more, because some people did more, um, I will write you an email this week and say, I received your pincushion photo. That way, if you don't get an email from me by Friday, let me know. Say, Deb, I sent you a picture. Let me know. Okay? So, because as you've been sending them, I try to take and put them in a little folder because I want you to get credit for it. And there, oh my gosh, there's so many cute ones. So let me see. Yep. Melissa, I got yours. I have the, that was really, really cute. I can't say anything because I'm trying to keep them a surprise. Um, I'm trying to keep that, you know, I don't, I want everybody to see them for the first time next Sunday. So, Oh, Oh, I'm glad I looked at the email. Oh my gosh, Mary, your Halloween, your Halloween thing is so cute. Okay, let me. I got hold on, guys. I've got to put Mary's in. Now we're gonna go look at your photos. I'm so excited. So, oh, that I'm so glad I opened the email. That thank you, Melissa, for having, you know, for giving me the idea to double check because now. I, I have a new fun picture. Okay. So, so whoever this Cynthia is, I'm going to send her an invitation to join. So that's exciting. All right. And wait till you see what Polly sent. She has been busy doing something very exciting. But, yes, I got Charlene Lawson's pen cushion in. I got a bunch. So I will send each entry. I will send you an email saying, yes, I got yours. And that way, if you you will know, Friday comes and you haven't gotten an email from me, shoot me an email and say, hey, um, you might have missed mine. 
So, okay. Let me close this out. All right. Let's. Oh, yeah, it's fun. You can you can either put the when like with for that moon, since I have to redo it, I'm going to put the I'm going to put interfacing under it. And then I'll put interfacing behind it. And I just use a little white glue to kind of hold it there so that when I then lay it on the other the full sheet of batting and the backing, it doesn't go anywhere. Then when I quilt it, it gets puffy. And that's to me is so much fun. And, you know. You can use googly eyes on your quilt. I even, I don't know if you saw the picture of my rooster quilt. I got real lichen. You know that lichen that grows on dead trees, that tree bark? I even took and hot glued lichen on the quilt. So, you know, and they said just make sure it's on good. I used real um, rooster feathers in that quilt. It's, it's like you can do anything now. It's so much fun. So just make sure you firmly attach it. All right, let's go see your photos because I've got bunches to show you. I've got pictures. I didn't go to Asheville without you. I've got pictures I took for you. All right. All righty. Let's look. Oh, my little Halloween area looks so cool. Hold on. Hold on just a second. If you have epilepsy, don't look at this right now. But... Woo! Let's go look at your show and tell. <laughs> I swear, I'm a little dumb kid, aren't I? All right, let's go look at them. I don't ever want to grow up because, you know what? Being too grown up gets... Okay, let me see. Yay, I was able to do this. Thank you, Mr. Mark. I can't wait to let him know how much this new arm is helping me. All right, here we come. I couldn't do this show without him, and I do like to give him that credit. All right, let's see what we've got. Okay, Miss Alberta Powell from Alabama is working on this. There is her crumb quilt. I love it. Can't wait to see what pattern she uses. Look at what she made. She worked on the Alex Anderson beginning of the pandemic quilt. And now it's hanging in her kitchen. Way to go, Miss Alberta. All right. Now we'll go to Barbara. And Barbara made this beautiful quilt for her granddaughter. Look at the geisha. Uh, girls and I love the way that she put the fabric together look at this really gave it an outstanding look very distinctive and then she made this I think for her grandson and that is beautiful or was it her daughter and son I am very sorry I try I read your emails when you send the photos but after a couple of weeks I'm I get fuzzy I'll just tell you and here's Miss Betty, her beautiful butterfly. And do you see the background on this? We're getting ready on our Thursday night art quilt. We're focusing on backgrounds, how to make them interesting, how to give them motion. So Miss Betty's photos were just in time. I love her gnome towel. Look at this gnome towel. It's so cute. And then someone gave her a bunch of wedding dress remnant um, laces and pearls and fabrics. And look what she made. Is that the cutest? I love that. And she's doing a binding tool star quilt, which I dearly love. Those colors are wonderful. And look how the turquoise makes it totally unique. She, You know, we've seen... Plenty of rainbow quilts, but putting the turquoise instead of a more traditional blue brought it to a new level. Way to go. Way to go. So thank you for sending me these pictures, Betty. All right. Now we have Miss Beverly. This will probably be the last time we see this one. So I'm hoping she's working on, on either made some changes to it or gotten further along and will send us some wonderful pictures. She's making this quilt of valor for her husband, and that's beautiful. 
All right. Now, Miss Bonnie, this will be our last week of showing you her Nora the Bear. That's the cutest thing. She was a quilt tester for this pattern. I love that. All right. And now we're going to go to Miss Carol. And Miss Carol sent a bunch of wonderful stuff. Look at this hexi. Now, it's kind of gotten around that I don't like hexies. Well, I like them fine. I just don't want to make one. I have a hard enough time doing regular seams, much less trying this. So when you send your hexies, they are pure eye candy for me. But just know I admire you all the more because there's no way I could ever handle making a hexie. But way to go. And then look at this undersea quilt. I hope Miss Linda McCollum checks this out because she was the first person I saw in this group who really loved doing all of the hand embroidery to create such depth on a quilt. Isn't that beautiful? Way to go, Miss Carol. Then here are her Chris. Um, her Christmas block of the weeks. And I love, love, love her fabric choice. It is truly magical, as her name implies. Here is, she was doing a scroll, which is, is I have seen a lot of in the magazines, that people are doing all kinds of wonderful, fun hand embroidery and embellishment on a scroll that then can be wound on an antique spool. You know, the antique bobbin spools like this and or anything else you want to wind it on. And I love that scroll. Here's another Christmas block. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, and this, this is, now she will tell you, she always tells me and I always forget, but I love the big stitch look and that wonderful collection of fabric crumbs. I love it. Look at these. Aren't they wonderful? And just think, you know, she's got gifts for the holidays, anything. And they're just a nice little creative touch, a little piece of art from you to whoever you give them to. Look at her. Isn't she something? I'm loving this. And this is, like I told Miss Lisa, you, she's developing her own signature. And that is so important for any artist. And that's, that's the back of it. Just beautiful. So thank you, Miss Carol, for sending those. You give us so much inspiration. Now, Miss Charlene Lawson. She, her, I, was it her son that was recently got married? Look at this. Is this just beautiful? Oh, my gosh. Makes me want to be young again. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Looks like it's on a farm. Just beautiful. Ah, oh, isn't that magical? Look at that cake. All of it. Mm. So nice. Oh, look at the bride. She's lovely. And here's the bride and the groom. Oh, that is so nice. Oh, look at the flower girl. That's so cute. I love this. Then here is her Halloween quilt. I know that was an abrupt change, but isn't this cute? She did the stitching of the web on her machine and the spider she glued on. I think that is ingenious. Now, let's see. Then here is, here is that Halloween quilt. It's a door quilt. Lovely. Way to go, Miss Charlene. Okay. Here's another spider's web. Oh, that spider, it looks very real. Oh, look at that. 
Woo! How cool. I, I love that she got those spiders so that she could hang it. Here's the back of the Halloween door quilt. Cute, cute, cute. And, oh, this is another wonderful Halloween quilt. Thank you, Miss Charlene, for showing those to us. We love them. All right. Now we're going to go to, okay, I think we can stop at mine real quick. Let me see. Hold on. Today. Here we go. All right. So, you know, last week, my daughter's. We're here, my grandson, and this is my quilt, I mean, my pumpkin. This is my one daughter from the movie Halloween, Mike Myers. This is my grandson's, and this is my other daughter's. So we had fun making pumpkins. I would have brought it in today, but it was full of ants. So last time I checked. The other day, I gave myself a gift and wound bobbins. Till I couldn't wind anymore. Oh, and there's the Elna machine. But I wound the bobbins and said, that way when I sew, I don't have to stop. Because, you know, it's all fun and games until, oh, I just thought this was so cute from Bear Creek. So I put that in there. And then I love this saying, Miss Pat Fry. Be thinking about Miss Pat Fry. We're worried about her husband. He's been very, very tired lately. So he'll be seeing a specialist. But she's got to pack up a house. These are my grandsons with their Halloween books that I sent them. Love those babies. And, of course, my Snoopy. In fact, the leaves have been falling like mad. I need to go out and try to catch some like when we were children. All right. Let me see. Here is, whoops, let me go back. This is my daughter and I in Asheville. Let me do something here. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to set it on a slideshow. It's a little bit easier for me. So this is my, my oldest girl, Becky. It was her 43rd birthday. This is the store that she called my mothership. So here I am in front of my mothership. Mark got the biggest kick out of that. And there are a few little photos on the road. We, it, like I said, we drove to Asheville, which is v way up in the mountains. And here we are. Got a selfie. We took lots of selfies. We wanted to send them to my other daughter so she wouldn't feel like she was missing out too much. And I just, I get excited when I see mountains. We're in the foothills, and but these, we went into the mountains. And the colors were wonderful. I Like I say, we love fall. Mellow mushroom. Eat there if any, if you get a chance. And I just loved, the whole city is very artistic, but the mellow mushroom really went out of the way. They have go, uh, bowling balls put in the walls there. Here's an art gallery, and it's so cute to watch these glass pieces. There were places that looked like Christmas. It was so neat. Look at these wind chimes. Oh, that just sings to my heart. And here I am up close at my mothership. <laughs> My, Mark thought that was so funny. It's like, yep, that's her mothership. I can see it. <laughs> and now I'm that crazy old craft lady. Oh, this was the funniest bookshelf. It's a very progressive city. <laughs> oh, gosh. I loved the textures on this wall. This is a thick tile, old brick. There were just everywhere you look, there were paintings on walls, murals, there were art galleries. It was just a feast for the eyes. Isn't that beautiful? Then there are even alternate lifestyle establishments and bars. So it's a big, wonderful city. I just thought this Art Deco building was so awesome looking. And look at this vintage clothing, vintage style clothing shop. 
this very bohemian city. Music, arts, free thinking, all of that is very big in Asheville. They, they celebrate it. This is a ginkgo biloba, and I just thought that was so pretty. I just had to show you. Here is a mural on the side of a brick building. Another mural. I loved the texture of this ancient brick building. Look at this, fresh flowers on the outside of one of the shops. Isn't that neat? Look at that little door decoration. This I took the picture because this building is sinking in the middle. I didn't go in that one. This was this is where I bought the beads and look at these wonderful light fixtures. Look at this interesting mural. I'm not sure what that is. And this was at the Mellow Mushroom and it's just different color rocks. There's the inside of the Mellow Mushroom. It was interesting all right. And this was a rotating glass ball. But you can tell I don't get out much. Right outside the window, it had been a gas station years gone by. So they've left. Oh, the, this is my daughter with our pizzas. Oh, my gosh, was that good. This is my, it's only 10 inches. It looks bigger, but it was so good. That was my expression because that was some yummy pizza. <laughs> and out this window was more of the gas station equipment. And I just loved the sky. It was just so complex with clouds. I need to wash my windshield. But anyway, isn't that beautiful? Such a big sky and the mountains and the colors. Oh, I was so happy to get out and see the actual changing colors. Mm. It was a little bit drizzly, but we still had the best time. There were moments we had a little sun. And here we are, another selfie inside the car. Here we are at the restaurant. Outside the restaurant, we wanted plenty of photos of our big day. All right, I think, are we back at the end? Let me see. Yep, we're back at the end. So let me escape that. And that was our trip to, okay, that was our trip to Asheville Friday. Now, here we are, Debbie Holt. Look at her wonderful fall quilt. I love this. I really love that. That's probably one of my favorite pumpkin quilts I've ever seen. Look at this candy corn. Isn't that fun? And I love all the prairie points around the edge, or some people call them shark's teeth. And here are some blocks of her block of the week. Excellent job. I love the colors. Love the colors. Okay. See, when you bring, when you put, I love when you put your own stamp on something. You change it. You make it personal to you. I love it. Now here's Miss Dolores's Miss Dolores's block of the week. Love it. And and don't they look different depending on the color scheme you use? This is a quilt she had in progress when we were doing the landscape, mountain landscape quilts. I love this. She's had to take it off her design wall because she's working on something in a hurry. Here is her finished mountain lake landscape. Beautiful. All the different layers. She really outdid herself. And here's another block of the week. I just love what you guys have, the own, your own spin that you've put on this. So thank you. Keep sharing these. It's wonderful. You have answered the call to share your beautiful work. And here, Miss Jody has finished about six 
But she's got a very good excuse because you see this photo right here? Wait till you see what she made from this photo. Look at this. And she's still working on it. But is that amazing or what? I just love that. She is so, so talented. If I ever made something that amazing, I would be over the moon. Just beautiful. Mm. So way to go, Miss Jody. You have an excuse to, to take your time on whatever you want because that is beautiful work. And I'd much rather see that beautiful work from you. This is, hold on, this is Kim Hicks um, Crumb Block. And I'm, I love that she used a charcoal as in her neutral. Isn't that awesome? Okay, now let's go back. And here we go. Miss Lisa, I, I told her she was afraid to send too much. And I said, no, please do. We can all use the inspiration. And with the holidays coming up, you might be inspired by something she has done for your Christmas gifts this year. I'm going to talk to my kids about alternate Christmas gifts because I know that a lot is um, on back order. And I like handmade gifts anyway. Isn't that beautiful? So look at some of these. I mean, this is amazing. Her and Carol have a lot of talent with, you know, things they had, find things they found, turning them into works of art. Gosh, Lisa, that is just amazing. I love, look at this. I looked at that vase and I said, I want to make a fabric like that for a cover of a journal. That is awesome. All the different textures. Look at this with the big, beautiful tassel. How wonderful. Oh, I love this. It's, I think she said she made this for her son. And her blanket stitches are incredible. Way to go. Here are two bowls, art bowls that she made. Look at this tapestry she made. Isn't that beautiful? And look at the tack nails all around the edge. Look at all the layers of color and leaves and the fringe on the bottom. I tell you, you ladies have so much talent. And thank you for sharing that with us. But I, you know, like I said, I got the idea of looking at that one vase and said, if I could make a journal cover with that kind of texture, that would be wonderful. Now, here's Miss Mary. And let me tell you something. Miss Mary had never done paper piecing before. I'm so impressed. I think she's done a phenomenal job. Just phenomenal. And she has all kinds of Christmas fabrics and some metallics. And it's just going to be wonderful. Fussy cut all of those carolers. So she's done a great job. This one gave her a little trouble. She kept working on it until she got it. I'm so impressed. And here, I just got this in the mail when I went to check for Melissa's entry. And look what she's been working on. And I love the googly eyes. I mean, these are so cute. Or button eyes, they might be. But is that cute or what? I love it. And she's got an owl up in the tree and the bats and the ghost. And it's just the black cat. It's just so cute. And like I say, you know, sometimes a holiday like Halloween kind of helps you laugh at some of the things that we have as fears. It has been a tough two years. And we can all use some fun and enjoyment. 
In fact, tonight on PBS, I don't know if it's going to be on your PBS channel, but they're going to have a Charlie Brown, the great pumpkin Charlie Brown. Now, here is, this is Miss Melanie. And look at, she, with her crumb blocks, instead of using white here, she used a very almost black charcoal. Isn't that awesome? So when she puts these together, that's going to help her have a very distinct, distinctive pat secondary pattern and that's what i love about these blocks depending on which way you turn them you've got a whole different quilt in that that is so sweet she finished it there oh and she said that she wanted to put the hexes on the back of that quilt but she didn't want it to look too contrived so she kind of played frisbee with them and threw them on the quilt and put them sewed them down where they landed how unique is that idea? Oh, there's a big pump, 1,900-pound pumpkin she saw a few weeks ago. And artwork from there that are all wine bottle metal casings. It's wonderful. Okay, let me see if I dare. So she just took them and kind of threw them and sewed them down where they landed so they wouldn't look too predictable. I love this pumpkin quilt. Love it. Two of them. Wow. Okay, so that's Miss Melanie's. Now let me see. What else do we have? I'm not sure. Okay. Miss Polly. And I, I'm going to make sure I haven't missed anybody. Well, you know, we showed you the kitty quilt that she had been working on. And Miss Polly is a relatively new quilter. Well, wait until you see what she's tackling. This gal has got it going on. I have never made a New York beauty, a big New York beauty block. And I'm loving what she's working on. So I think she's told me who it's by. In fact, Polly, you can tell them. But she is doing a New York beauty sampler. So I'm very impressed. Way to go, Polly. All right, let me see. Who else? Miss Susan's, and I think, and let me know if I've missed any of your work. But I think we just have Miss Susan's to go, and she's been busy. She's got her Nora the Bear has got a little snowflake that she sewed on some snowflakes onto the finished quilt. That is so cute. So there's her pattern testing that she did. Okay, now let's see. Then here are some blocks she's been working on. I love how neat and tidy she is. She's so organized. And this is a planner she was making. So I think she loves doing, um, what do you call them? Um, art paper photo journal journaling or something she likes doing that and i love it here is a pen cushion she made home sweet home then an up close picture of nora looking at a snowflake and look at this cute table runner with a bee on it so way to go miss susan i don't know how you have been you have been creating so much. Um, one thing real quick I just did want to show you. Let me see. Um, 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 there was one thing. Where we're, and what we're working on Thursday nights. Let me see where I have it. I hide these things sometimes. Here we go. We're working on our... Our question is, how can we make a back of a quilt that's interesting, as interesting as the design? And what you'll see with these quilts is they're all pieced backs, whether it's applique, whether it's random, taking blocks, cutting them, repiecing. But it's just to show what you can do with a background and I have wanted to try this I've never tried this before 
So some of them are pieced, some of them are fused. But isn't that interesting? So what we're all working on is we're all going to think of, and it doesn't have to be a big project, but a look at that. I just love that. And I try sometimes to be too realistic. And this looks so much more fun. So we're going to try to design our own little work that's going to feature something very interesting at the background. You can make it, like this is a bunch of diamonds, horizontal diamonds. It's a bunch of different little strips. And they're kind of rough fibers. Look at these blocks. It was strip sets cut apart and put back together. These are all blocks. Look at these strips going in the circle. So we're going to come up with something that it can give movement, it can give interest. What can it add to the quilt? We don't want to take away. Look at this Bargello as the background. So we're all going to put our thinking caps on and have a design that we're going to, to make a simple wall hanging. Look at this, storm at sea in a huge wave. We, it can bring humor, whimsy. So I want you to be thinking about it. If you'd like to participate, another way to think of quilt backgrounds. I love these vertical strips. Look at those tiny triangles. The mosaic and an angle. That's very impressive. Look at the strips, how everything shows movement, the wind. So, if you would like to participate, Thursday nights at 7.30 Eastern Time. We're going to start this new adventure. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be working on next. And so that you, if you want to play along with us, you are more than welcome. We invite you to our Thursday night live stream where it is play with fabric. This is crooked now. I've got to get used to this new arrangement. But for the most part, I really do like it. Let me see if this will allow me to tilt it just a little. I don't know. It's a whole new world. Mark said, I'm always having to adjust this. I said, yes, but to get something better would be very expensive. So he's like, okay, I'll keep adjusting this. <laughs> All right, everybody. Oh, thank you for reminding them to give me thumbs up. I would like it. I'd like to spread the word about the fun we have and the fun things we work on. So I think I have got a retreat coming up in a couple weeks. So I need to sit down and I need to write list. What projects do I want to work on when I go to the retreat? What do I need for each project? What kind of sewing supplies? Number one, have I packed the foot pedal and the electric cord for the sewing machine? I cannot tell you how many times I've heard Oh, no, I forgot my power cord. Can't have a lot of fun without a power cord. So I've got to think of my portable cutting mat, my portable ironing board, my portable iron. I've just got to get it all in my head. My medications I take. What kind of clothes? What am I going to sleep in? Do I want to take my pillow? Slippers. Um, ooh. I, I want to make a more comfortable pad for this chair 
because I'm going to be sitting a good number of hours in this chair. So there's just all these things to do, and that is going to be something big that I want to work on. Because you know what? I pride myself in trying not to forget anything when I go to a retreat so that I get there and I just have fun. So if you have any good ideas, and I guess what? I'll only be missing my Thursday night art quilts when I go on the retreat. Luckily, I don't leave until after one Sunday, and I'm back by another Sunday, and Mark's going to be here and hold down the fort while I'm gone. So didn't everyone do a wonderful job? Gosh, I love seeing your work. It just makes me happy. So anyway, I think I've run out of things to say. Mark doesn't hear that very often. <laughs> Although I got to tell you, he does a very good job. Oh, there is one more thing. I finished the baby quilt and I'm getting ready to put it on my frame. And I was telling y'all that I ran out of this border this stripe for the border. So what I did is I used some of a blue stripe and I interspersed it. And I think it looks cute. So here is the baby quilt. And one thing I'm really proud of, let me see if I can turn this around. Wrapped up with all kinds of caution tape here. Okay. Okay. He said if I just did this, it would come off. Let me see. Okay. What I'm showing you is not necessarily beautiful, but it is in a way to me. Because this last year, I've thought a lot about waste not, want not. And I've thought... I don't want to leave a legacy of stuff that needs to be hauled to the dump. So I, this time, I said I'm taking all of the scraps, the pieces people cut, I mean that I cut, people cut, that I cut, some of the blocks I didn't end up using, all of it. And some pieces weren't that big, but I sewed them all together. And... I said, if I can put it in the backing, it doesn't go to the landfill. It doesn't sit around here gathering dust and space. So I put it all together. The only new fabric that I had to cut was two three and a half inch strips for each side to make sure it was big enough to go on the quilt frame. I'm really proud of this. For me, it's the first time I've ever done something like that. And is it just gorgeous and wonderful? No, it took time. It took two days. But somehow it just felt right not to take all those scraps and either throw them away or to stuff them in a scrap bag that would sit for who knows how long. So, and it's bright and colorful and it's going to be most likely sitting on top of a floor because these baby quilts that you sew, they love to lay them down and lay the baby on them. So that's fine. I don't need anything fancy. And this fabric is actually more expensive fabric than I normally put on the back anyway. So I just thought I would show you I did something a little different. And it's kind of fun. So I am going to put a note on the quilt saying, this is the front <laughs> because that, that might confuse somebody. But anyway, I thought it was kind of a fun experiment to try. Hmm, you know, how is this going to work out? So anyway, I think that is all I have for today. I cannot believe that tomorrow's November 1st. Wow. <laughs> I've got Christmas to think about. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to do our block of the week, because two more blocks 
we're ready to put those puppies together. And on our site are all the patterns, one through ten. Some I've pulled off of the messaging and put into a file. Just go to the file section and look for the Christmas block of the week. But all ten files are there. Even There's even a message in our group that has the instructions for the sashing and, and the borders. So I can't wait to put that together. It will not be quilted in time for Christmas, but I'm going to have it hanging up somewhere and I'm going to enjoy it. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for the time you spend with me. I'm deeply touched. I look so forward to our Sundays together. It really makes my week. And I appreciate Ever, all the talent you bring, the love you bring. Our group, SIO, is the sweetest group. And we, we really do keep you all close to our hearts. And especially with this last year, we value each and every one of you so much. So take good care. Do something special for you. Because you know what? Especially during this season, you can't take care of others unless you've taken care of yourself, okay? So have a great week. Uh, keep those pictures coming. I love them. And let's see if I can get caught up on my Halloween, my pumpkin, so many things. I just, the faster, harder I work, the further behind I get. So I will try to wrap up some of these, but just know you're so much fun for me to come spend time with. Have a great week, all of you. You are the best. Bye-bye, guys. Okay, we're going to go out with a fright. Here, look, got to get my music. Hold on. Let me see. I mean, this is too much fun. Okay, I'll get my music. <laughs> Happy Halloween!